All right, here we go. It's a brand new Flyers Daily for the 30th of August, 2024 Flyers Daily. As always, presented by Ticketmaster, Make More Memories Live. Our final show of the month of August, the last month of the offseason that has no hockey in it. There's no regular season hockey in September, but we at least get rookie camp, rookie games, training camp, and preseason And regular season is around the corner. So we are getting very close. We're getting to kind of the calm before the storm. I think things maybe start picking up uh, next week with more and more players in town and captain skates and so forth. And with that said, this time of year, it gets exciting. You get the excitement of a new season. Spring training in baseball is always so optimistic when it comes to Major League Baseball teams. Even if your team hasn't been good for a number of years, that's not the case with the Phillies right now, what has been in in their past. But the beginning of a season is a new opportunity. You never know what's going to happen, how a pro sports season could play out. There's surprises all the time. Teams you thought wouldn't be very good end up all of a sudden a few key players on a team make a jump and it changes the entire dynamic of a team slotting in pro sports is extremely important if players can step up and fill a role that you didn't think they could then you have other players falling into a role they're more suited for when you're asking too many players to play a role above their capability that's when you run into a problem Now, we don't know what this season is going to have in store in that regard. So in Wednesday's episode, I had the question of the day, which was, where are you on this season? What is your level of excitement on a scale of 1 to 10? What are you feeling right now? I've called this offseason kind of uh, underwhelming because there wasn't big additions to the roster. There wasn't big trades so it's a very similar team than the one we saw the year prior so sometimes that can dampen expectations and I get why when you go out and you make some huge trades and a couple of free agent signings it gets everybody in a lather that creates excitement now Matt Vemichkov coming over obviously creates a ton of excitement we haven't seen a rookie player for the Flyers, garner this kind of excitement since Eric Lindros. When Claude Giroux came in and was a rookie, he did not garner this kind of excitement. Nobody knew Claude Giroux would become what he became. So that obviously engenders excitement. That will affect a lot of people's score on that 1 to 10 scale, just the Michkov factor. But there's a lot of other factors. Now, just because you have one player that brings it up, this the number high, other elements can bring it down. You know, what if you have big questions like I do about goaltending or the health of certain players or the development of others, where Morgan Frost is going to fit in uh, going into this season. So a lot of those things can factor into the number you come up with when you determine your level of excitement. So I got a bunch of responses. You, first of all, you guys are awesome. The amount of responses I got is insane. We're going to start off with the YouTube ones that were mentioned uh, in the comment section on the YouTube feed. Then we're going to get to uh, some DMs and emails as well. But let's get it started. Uh, Drago629 on uh, YouTube said, My excitement level is at 10. Why? Well, because it's hockey and it's Flyers hockey. And I love my Flyers. 2010 lives on in my memory. See, that's very pragmatic. Look, I'm always excited about hockey, period. End of sentence. I don't need to add the other stuff. I just want hockey to be back. I just want to be watching hockey. I love the Stanley Cup playoffs. I love when the Flyers are in it. But even if they're not in it, I'm not going to go, I'm not watching the Stanley Cup. I love playoff hockey. So uh, I'm with Drago on that one. John Causey, 1293, says uh, 10 out of a 10 with excitement. He said, I don't see the Flyers being in the playoff hunt, but I'm looking forward to who steps up, who gets better, who's part of the future. And a lot of the players have this year to prove who or what they are. He said big year for a club in the club in evaluation. Also, the Flyers have so many assets to play with during next offseason. Let's go Flyers. You're absolutely right. Next offseason, you have the three first round picks, the three second round picks. I'll worry about that when the time is right, whether some of that is used as 
part of a trade, but I'll worry about that at that time. But your questions are dead on. Who steps up? Who gets better? Who is part of the future? And the converse of that is who doesn't? You know, that reminds me of Nathan R. Jessup from A Few Good Men. Who's going to do it? You, you, Lieutenant Weinberg. That's the kind of who's going to step up. That's what we've got to find out this season. Chris Brown, 89-62, says excitement is 10 out of 10. Why? Because this team has to feel it. It has identity that's growing. They certainly had an identity last year, but I don't think identity is one of those things that necessarily travels from season to season. I don't think momentum does that way in pro sports either. Um, They're going to have to forge a new identity. That has to happen organically. Even though there's not a lot of change in the locker room, um, there are cert- the identity and you know the, the the kind of tone of this team, how it who leads. You know, some players, younger players, will step up. How's Mishkov going to fit in? How's Fedotov going to fit in? You know, those are questions. A guy that got committed to Garnet Hathaway does he step into more of a leadership position? As as the dynamics change, so does the locker room for players. So that's four so far, and all are 10 out of 10. Uh, let's go to Explicit 5800. He says, hello, Jason. My level is 8 out of 10. Because deep down inside, I want the Flyers to finish very low. But at the same time, I want us to make sure Meechkoff gets the Calder. So we can't be awful if that should happen. Um, I, I, know that, I know there are, is still a section of fans that want the Flyers to be really bad so they can draft really high. Um, but I would say, I, I'm not going to say that's a, being a good fan, bad fan, or anything. I, I get the end game, um, but I don't think this team is positioned to do that without significant injury and significant just fall off a cliff development of some key players. So I don't know if that's going to happen, but I, I get what you're saying. But again, if you, yeah, like you said, if you want to see Meechkov get the call or uh, the team's got to be good. Um, the team is going to have to be yeah, more relevant. Now, te- bad teams have had players get the Calder before, so that's not impossible. A lot of times, you know, a first over like Bedard last year, first overall pick with Chicago, Chicago stunk. Bedard's numbers were very decent. He missed a lot of games. I think he only played sixty six, uh, but and he had sixty one points, but. He was a minus 44, and the team was horrible. So that can happen. I just don't know that the Flyers are ticketed for that. I don't believe they are. Uh, David Avec 648 says, 10 out of 10. This is a can't-lose season. If the team is bad, Flyers draft high with a ton of picks. If the team is good, then we enjoy the ride. Also, I cannot wait to see the evolution of Michkov. Very well said. Um, Pumpkin King, 5174. He just logged in to say, Flyers have played preseason games in London, Ontario for several seasons in a row not long ago. Yeah, they used to do those split squad games up there in London, Ontario. And I remember we would have them on the radio, but you couldn't get them on TV because they didn't have, it wasn't set up as, as a legit NHL building for broadcasting. So you're, you are absolutely right about that because I had mentioned that the Flyers play in Montreal this preseason, and it's not often that they go, uh, you know, break out the passport and go over uh, the border to, to play preseason games. And then Grabowski, who I called out in last episode because he said that Fedotov um, is not an NHL goalie and he won't play more than 15 games. Uh, he also checked in and said, thanks for the call out, Jason. I, I'm glad you didn't take it personally. Uh, he said, but honestly, Fedotov is not an NHL caliber goalie. I'll donate $20 to your favorite Flyer charity for every game he pay, plays past 15 this year. Okay, I don't know if he's an NHL goalie. I'm not saying he is. What I'm saying, Grabowski, is if you're judging him on the three games last year, that's ridiculous. But he will play more than 15 games this year, no matter what, unless he gets injured. So if you want to donate to my favorite charity, which is going to be uh, the PSPCA for every game that he plays over uh, 15 this year, that would be awesome. Um, And I'm sure Torts would appreciate it as well. Uh, John checked in on uh, the, the YouTube feed and said, what about Ryan Ellis? Is he's done? Yeah, he's been done. Uh, Stackalik checked in and said, six out of a 10 on excitement. One player does not make an entire team great. Bryce Harper can't make the Phillies trade all by himself. Totally agree. And, and hockey, 
is basketball, one player, and like in the NBA, can affect a team much more, although you have to have multiple superstars to win in today's NBA. Um, same thing in hockey. You can have some great players, and it doesn't, doesn't matter unless you have a, a full team of players that know their role and can execute their role. Um, I, I don't think Michkov is any reason that they're, he's going to make the team uh, by himself great. Uh, he said Michkov will play 20 minutes of hockey in a 60-minute game and will be good once he adjusts. He said, I'm concerned with the other 40 minutes. Flyers need more, quote, high-end talent. Uh, they have talent, but not high-end talent. Konechny is high-end, he said. They do need more high-end talent, absolutely. Um, do they have some players that can develop into that? Um, up front, you know, Tippett is, I think, can be a better player than he's been. But, I mean, when I, when I talk about high-end talent, I'm talking about point-per-game type players and, and beyond. So I don't see other guys on the team beyond Konechny who's been a point-per-game player one season in his career, and Michkov as being the guys that can be point-per-game players. Couturier was close. He had two 76-point seasons, um, but he's not that same Sean Couturier uh, that was putting up 30-plus goals and 76 points. Um, so I do agree with you. One player does not make an entire team. Uh, Bill Blake said, I like Frost this year, and Farabee Enforcer, the killer Fs. And uh, the last YouTube comment is from Guido Valenti. He says, uh, if Drysdale can stay healthy and play well, I don't think we'll see uh, Emil Andre in the mix uh, for the future this season on defense. Well, that's first of all, Drysdale's a right shot guy. Uh, Andre's a left. So I don't think those kind of cancel each other out or affect each other. But uh, we'll see if Andre does. His camp's going to be very interesting. Um, some emails now. Michael Grunstrom uh, shot me an email. Said, hello, Jason. I'm going to 10 excitement level last year the team was fun to watch and the leadership from danny and keith jones is so refreshing in addition i'll be attending my first flyers game in march at chicago awesome enjoy the game in chicago the flyers play uh the chicago blackhawks let me look at my trusty schedule here on my wife's birthday march 23rd at three in the afternoon so enjoy that game michael uh next email some of these got a little bit longer nicholas uh resh Wretch uh, tweeted in or emailed in and said, Good morning, Jason. I hope this finds you well. I'm a lifelong uh, Flyers fan from Wisconsin. First things first, I love your show and the insight you provide. Never miss one. And I appreciate your consistency and contribution to Flyers fandom. Thank you. I appreciate that, Nicholas. He said, For the upcoming season, I'm at a 10 out of a 10 in terms of excitement. In terms of expectations, I truly don't have any. He said, The reason for my excitement is because, in my opinion, the Flyers front office has been accused of not doing anything except kicking the can down the road. But so far, I've been a huge fan of Danny, Danny's tenure. He went on to compare uh, Danny Breer's tenure to, and building uh, to the Green Bay Packers, who are his favorite football team. He said, diatribe aside, I feel that the season will allow for massive answers to very big and important questions, including Michkov can't determine his ceiling in year one. Um, he says, the goalies, nobody has any clue what Fedotov is, including Grabowski. And I, I have no clue either. No clue. I pride myself on having a clue about goalies. I have no clue. Um, he said, we also cannot trust if Urson is a bona fide one or a good tandem goalie. We do know that he belongs in the NHL. We should get more illumination on the goalie situation throughout the year. Totally agree. Uh, he said, Drysdale, can he stay healthy? In my opinion, this is the only question that matters in regards to Drysdale. Uh, prospect and young guy development. Can Brink stay and contribute? Is he an NHLer? Uh, with the Flyers, does Bonk look ready this year, or does he need another year in the AHL? And what if Jet, Jet Lachenko is ahead of schedule? Um, I'd say Bonk is, I mean, unfortunately for Bonk, he's got to go back to the London Knights, and he can't go to the AHL. I think he's ready for the AHL. I don't think he's going to be in a situation where they're going to put him into the NHL. He'd have to blow their doors off and cap. And then he goes on to say, draft capital for 2025. Flyers can make a lot happen. Um, it's not an, difficult to em envision uh, a big turnaround uh, with the being able to stock the cupboards with all of the draft picks, the three first next year, three seconds, and so forth. Thanks for taking the time to read this and cannot wait for this season, Nick. Uh, thanks for the note, Nick. Great stuff. Let's go to our next one here. It comes from Andrew Garland out in B.C. He said, first, I uh, want to say I drive a lot for work and 
As a lifelong Flyers fan, I enjoy listening to your daily update pods on the team. Thank you. Appreciate that, Andrew. He said, my excitement level is a 10 out of a 10. Everybody is pumped up. It, this is Obviously, this is big time. Michkov's mentioned in every one. Mave Michkov simply put is the reason for his excitement. He said, I haven't been this excited since they traded for Pronger, and the Flyers haven't had a prospect like Michkov since Lindros. He said, I live in Nanaimo, B.C., which is on Vancouver Island, straight across the water from Vancouver, and I've got tickets to see the Flyers play the Canucks in the season opener and can't wait to see the Mad Russian's first NHL game. He also said, on a side note, I'm a goalie parent to a 17-year-old who's trying to make a local junior team on the island. He's got Fedotov's height and is pushing six foot seven. He included a picture. The kid is huge. Can't teach height. He said, I've passed on my Flyers' passion to him as well. Keep up the good work. Cheers, Andy from BC. Um, hard being a goalie parent, Andy. <laughs> I'm sure you know. Sitting in those stands when your kid is the last line of defense is not easy. All right, let's get to one more. This one comes from Daniel Madden. He says, um, this is not in regards to excitement, but he said, why, do, why don't the Flyers re-sign Torts unless he wants to retire? He said, what's Brad Shaw's record? Um, Brad Shaw actually has a record. He was a head coach in 2005-2006 with the Islanders uh, for 41 games, and he had a record of 18-18-4. Um, he said, we're always at least in the five years go through coaches like a hot potato. He said, I trust Danny and Jonesy's and the brains behind the curtain, but I'm tired of seeing low-end coaches plague our team. Now, so I, I wanted to look at that because um, – the average tenure, I think, for an NHL coach is just over two years right now, which is insane to me. That is too much turnover. Why do teams fire coaches in the season all the time? Because it's worked. <laughs> We've seen it before. We've seen coaches have really good years, and then, boom, they're gone the next year. All of a sudden, they can't coach, apparently. Uh, but when John Stevens was fired on December 4th of 2009, Flyers were really underperforming that year. And Peter Laviolette was brought in. And obviously the Flyers and the remainder of that season ended up going to the cup final. Had some really good years under Peter Laviolette. Eventually he was let go, I think just six games into the season in 2013. Um, Craig Berube took over for a couple of years. Uh, then Dave Hackstall came in for three years, 277 games. Scott Gordon was the interim coach when Dave Haxtall was fired. Then Elaine Vino was brought in. He was here for uh, kind, kind of two years, 147 games. But the pandemic was in the middle of that, so they missed some games. So not even 164 games, which would be two full seasons as the head coach. Uh, Mike Yo then became the interim head coach. And then John Tortorella was brought in. So since that day in 2009... The Flyers have had on the bench one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different guys as the acting head coach of the team. That is way too much. Now, Torts is going into year three. Um, I, the, I, I don't know how much longer Torts wants to do it. I think he believes, he's talked about this, and we've talked about this on Hockey and Hounds, his job was to come in here and get this whole thing pointed in the right directions, get a standard of play uh, a pride in uh, the team again, a pride in the organization, bring the Flyers back to relevance. Um, so I don't know how, how longer he wants to do it, but who's the next guy? That remains to be seen. Who's going to be available? How does Torts feel in season after this season? Uh, where is the team? There's a lot of questions to be answered. So um, I don't know how that's going to play out, but I do agree with you, Daniel. Uh, that is too many head coaches. I mean, th the most amount of games by any head coach in the last uh, 20 years for the Flyers has been Dave Haxtall. Dave Haxtall coached 277 games. You go back, I mean, you look at Terry Murray, coached 212 in the mid-90s, and then Wayne Cashman was here for 61 games, Roger Nielsen for 185. Craig Ramsey was in for 28 games. And Bill Barber for a year and change. Ken Hitchcock had 254. Uh, then John Stevens, 263. And then, you know, Laviolette is 272. Dave Haxtell ends up with 277. So there's a lot of turnover 
in hockey, and I have a theory on it. My theory is players growing up in this sport, you go through each level in two-year increments. You have two years at Might. You have two years at Squirt, two years at Pee Wee, two years at Bantam, two years at Midget, two years at Junior, and so on and so forth. So every two years for high-end players, likely is the likelihood is that the coach changed and you got a different voice. So maybe that's part of it. That's my theory. But uh, we'll see how that plays out in due time. So great contributions. Everybody's excitement level, for the most part, is very high um, for different reasons. Shared reasons as well. Meechkoff is a shared reason. Uh, but we'll see how this all kind of develops uh, over the beginning of this season. A good start would be good start from the team and some really big wow moments from Meechkoff would really start to ignite the fan base even more. Can't wait for it. All right, we'll be back Monday. It'll be Labor Day, but Bill Meltzer and I will be back, and we'll continue some bold predictions and much more. So join us then, Monday, for a brand-new Flyers Daily, our first show of September. Have a great weekend, everybody.